I ask the gentlelady from Alabama, Ms. Sewell, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today I rise to join so many Americans across this nation and this world in celebrating the 50th anniversary of Dr. Martin Luther King's letter from a Birmingham jail. After being arrested on April 12, 1962, Dr. King came across an article in the Birmingham News entitled, White Clergymen Urge Local Negroes to Withdraw from Demonstration. The eight white clergymen who authored that article were very critical of Dr. King and the others who demonstrated. They called the demonstrations untimely and unwise. These criticisms inspired Dr. King to pen a letter that was published upon his release on April 16, 1963. The letter became one of the most preeminent documents of the civil rights era. So today I join the voices around the world as I read in part from this beautifully written, masterful document, Letter from a Birmingham Jail by Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. 16 April 1963, my dear fellow clergy, while confined here in the Birmingham County Jail, I came across your recent statement calling my present activities unwise and untimely. Seldom do I pause to answer criticisms of my work and ideas. If I sought to answer all the criticism across my desk, my secretary would have little time for anything else. But since I feel that you are men of genuine goodwill and that your criticisms are sincere and heartfelt, I want to try to answer your statement in what I hope will be a patient and reasonable term. I think I should indicate why I am here in Birmingham, since you have influenced the view that I am somehow an outsider coming in. I am in Birmingham because injustice is here. Moreover, I am cognizant of the interdependency of all communities and states. I cannot sit idly by in Atlanta and not be concerned about what's happening in Birmingham. Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. We are caught in an inescapable network of mutuality, tied in a single garment of destiny. Whatever affects one directly affects all indirectly. Never again can we afford to live with the narrow, provincial, outside agitator idea. Anyone who lives in the United States of America can never be considered an outsider anywhere within its bounds. We know through painful experience that freedom is, neither, is never voluntarily given by the oppressor. It must be demanded by the oppressed. Frankly, I have yet to engage in a direct action campaign that was not well-timed in the view of those who have not suffered unduly for the disease of, of segregation. For years now, I have heard the word wait. It rings in the ear of every Negro with piercing familiarity. This wait has almost always meant never. We must come to see with one another what one jurist said, that justice too long delayed is justice denied. Oppressed people cannot remain oppressed forever. The yearning for freedom eventually manifests itself, and it is this that has happened to the American Negro. The Negro has had many pent-up frustrations and resentments and must release them. So let him march. Let him make a prayerful pilgrimage to the city hall. Let him go on freedom rides and try to understand why he must do so let him release his frustration in a nonviolent way. But though I was initially disappointed at size as an extremist by you, as I continue to think about the matter, I gradually gained a measure of satisfaction from the label. Was not Jesus an extremist for love? Was not Amos an extremist for justice? Let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever flowing stream. Was not Paul an extremist for the Christian gospel? I bear in my body the marks of Lord Jesus Christ. So the question is not whether we will be extremists, but what kind of extremists will we be? Will we be extremists for hate, for love? Will we be an extremist for the preservation of the injustice or for the extension of justice? Perhaps the South and the nation of the world are in dire need of creative extremists. I hope this letter finds you in strong faith. 
Let us all hope that the dark cloud of racial prejudice will soon pass away and the deep fog of misunderstanding will lift from our fear and drenched communities. And in some time not so distant, that the radiant star of love and brotherhood will shine over our great nation and all of their succulent beauty. Yours for the cause of peace and brotherhood, signed Martin Luther King. So Mr. Speaker, on this 50th anniversary of this beautifully written letter, I hope my colleagues will join me in reflecting on its powerful words. Letter from a Birmingham jail stands as a reminder of how far we've come in our nation in living up to the ideals of justice and equality for all. Thank you. Chair recognizes.